If you were watching television in the 1990s, you may remember a TV show called Home Improvement. Tim Allen as Tim the Toolman Taylor. If you know the show, you'll remember his neighbor, Wilson W. Wilson Jr. Wilson was the mentor, guide character that always showed up across the fence in the third act of the show to help Tim learn a lesson and wrap the episode. The thing about the Wilson character was that you never saw his face. He was in every episode for nine seasons, but they never showed more than his hat and his eyes over the fence. I think that for, for various reasons, many of us approach the church like Wilson. We're present, we give, we worship, serve, but we never show people any more than that. In his book, Life Together, Dietrich Bonhoeffer talks about confession as breaking through, breaking through to community, breaking through to the cross, and breaking through to certainty. His verb choice here is pretty accurate because sin creates a barrier between us and community, a barrier between us and God, and between us and the certainty of our salvation. Let's look at Bonhoeffer's three here. First, sin. Sin demands to have us by ourselves. He says, he who is alone with his sin is utterly alone. The more isolated you are by sin, the greater destructive power sin will have in your life. Sin wants to remain unknown. Sin hates the light and it needs the darkness to grow. And in this unexpressed darkness, it will poison a person even in the middle of what Bonhoeffer calls a pious community. You might think that pious community is a good thing, but Bonhoeffer writes that the breakthrough through confession to community doesn't happen because we only have fellowship with other believers as pious people. We don't have fellowship together as sinners. Everyone feels they must conceal their sin from the fellowship. And we like to pretend we believe this, so our community looks pious. Many Christians are unthinkably horrified when a real sinner is suddenly discovered among the righteous. So what do we do? We remain alone with our sin, bearing the burden ourselves, living in self-delusion and hypocrisy because we are sinners. No one sets out to be a hypocrite. And I think there's a reason for how we've ended up here. One, the Bible talks about the truth that we are new creations, that the work that Jesus did on the cross means the old has passed and the new has come. In baptism, we proclaim that we have died with Christ to sin and been raised to new life with him. And so the desire here is born out of truth. It's what the Bible says, but it's also aspirationally. See, I think sometimes we think that maybe if we just don't talk about our sins, they'll go away. Or if we just keep trying, we'll someday actually be as pure as we believe we should be or the Bible tells us we are. And this part, there's a tension in Scripture that there's no relief from. Friends, God considers us, you, me, righteous before him because of Jesus' death on the cross, because it paid for our sin, and we need that free gift of grace because we are great and desperate sinners, and we have nothing to offer him in exchange for that gift. Both of these things can be true at the same time, and this message of liberation is God's truth. The acknowledgement of my condition as a sinner is not defeat or giving in to sin. Admitting the fact that I am a sinner is the way to freedom. The second breakthrough that Bonhoeffer talks about is a breakthrough to community. His prescription for biblical confession is that these unexpressed sins must be openly spoken and acknowledged in the presence of a trusted Christian brother or sister. In doing this, a couple things happen. First, the sin loses its power. 
this sin that hates the light, has now been revealed and is judged as sin and its isolating and dividing work is stopped. The second thing is that the sinner, the confessor, gives up the last shred of pretense, the pretense of piety, of self-justification, and we speak again of our need for the grace of God in Jesus. Third thing that happens when we confess to another believer is remarkable. See, as followers of Jesus, he tells us explicitly that we can forgive the sins of other people. Of all the works that Jesus did on earth, he doesn't explicitly say we can follow him in calming a storm. He doesn't explicitly say that, that we can raise the dead. He doesn't say that we can turn water into wine or other miracles like that, but he does say in John 20, 23, that if we forgive the sins of another believer, they are forgiven. This is amazing and so important. Think about this. If I have sins and I want them forgiven, I don't go to God with them in prayer. Bonhoeffer, by the way, says this is basically just confessing to myself. I have to go to my brother. In reading through this and preparing for this talk, this is incredible for me to process. And Bonhoeffer, in his book, does a great job explaining how we are the incarnation of Christ to each other in this way. And I urge you, this book is worth your time to explore. The last breakthrough Bonhoeffer mentions, it's actually several, they are a breakthrough to the cross, a breakthrough to new life, a breakthrough to certainty. See, the root of all sin is pride. I want to be my own law. I want to be right. I want my hatred, my desires, my life, my death. I want them my way. Confession to another brother or sister is the profoundest kind of humiliation. This hurts. I don't know if you've ever confessed, but it is awful. Standing before my brother with my sin in full view, oh, it's almost unbearable. Bonhoeffer writes, in the confession of concrete sin, the old man dies a painful, shameful death before the eyes of our brother. He goes on and says, the cross of Jesus destroys all pride. We cannot find the cross of Jesus if we shrink from going to the place where it is to be found, namely, what Jesus did, which is the public death of the sinner. And we refuse to bear the cross when we are ashamed to take on ourselves this shameful death of the sinner in confession. In confession, we, you and I, affirm and accept our cross in this deep mental and physical pain of humiliation before a brother or a sister, which means before God incarnate, you and I can experience the cross of Jesus as our rescue and salvation. The old man dies, but it is God who has conquered him. And now we share in the resurrection of Christ and eternal life. Oh, there is so much more here, so much in this small little book that I urge you to add it to your reading schedule. Let's, let me leave you with some final thoughts, maybe more practical ones. First, if you're watching this and you're a believer, read and dwell on Jesus' words to you in John 20, that you can, that you are charged with forgiving the sins of another and take that role seriously. Prepare yourself for the time when someone shares their sin with you so you can be Christ to them in that moment. And it takes work. You have to practice not reacting. You have to practice listening. You have to be prepared to keep in confidence what is shared. And if you do get the sacred opportunity of someone confessing sin to you, breathe, pray, listen well, Think of Jesus with the woman caught in adultery. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Basically, become the person you would want to confess to. Second, confession's hard. And finding someone safe, someone that you can trust, it can be a challenge. If someone doesn't immediately come to mind, 
reach out to us, reach out to the church. We can help connect you with a, a rooted group that will walk with you for a season and hear these things, or a Stephen minister that can be this for you. Bonhoeffer says, the confession isn't in public or in front of a group. Bonhoeffer actually talks about it specifically being just one-on-one -on -one with a trusted, grounded believer. And Bonhoeffer makes a difference between confessing concrete, actually committed sins and kind of this distant confessing to a general sinfulness. Don't be afraid to come clean. See, if we're all sinners, a mature believer will be able to understand and identify with you more than you think. You are not alone. Don't let sin try and convince you that you are the only one struggling. Finally, as good as this is for us, Bonhoeffer admits that this confession, it's not a biblical law. It's not a condition of salvation. Please don't hear this and feel guilty. Hear this and be challenged to take up the power given to you to speak life into another person, to be Christ to them and forgive their sins. And if you've made it this far and you're feeling that knot in your gut and reminded of a terrible sin that you can't stop being reminded of, take courage. God has created community for you and biblical confession can break the power of that sin. It can begin to heal the isolation you may feel from God's people and you will experience relief. Church, Let's not meet our brothers like Wilson W. Wilson and only show this much to each other. Let's dig in, let's be real, and let's break through to a fuller walk with Jesus.